Like Super Mutants, ghouls were introduced in the very first Fallout and have been in each game since then. And with a change of developers, naturally ideas change. Just how different are the ghouls compared to the original interpretations? Let's address the complaints and answer, did Bethesda ruin the ghouls? The first argument is about the origins of the ghouls. How does a ghoul become a ghoul? If you answer it, well, it depends, then you probably already know this Battle of the Dev history. The Fallout Bible is a strange thing. Even before the Bethesda buyout, the canon state of the Bible was questionable. The game developers themselves had different ideas. For ghouls, namely those who originated from Vault 12 and founded Necropolis, there was a debate between two major camps. There was Team Chris Taylor, who says that ghouls were born from FEV and radiation, and then there was Team Tim Kane, who says it's just radiation. Bethesda took over and it seems that they were in Tim Kane's camp, choosing to make ghouls only require radiation, and making them much more plentiful. Well, not all of us got the chance to hole up in a nice cushy vault when the bombs fell. A bunch of us got stuck out here in the world, and got a full-on blast of heat and radiation. Turned us into a pack of walking corpses. Near as I can tell, we age slower than you. A lot slower. There were even a few ghouls that were alive during the war. Of course, with a face like ground Brahmin meat, you can imagine that folks don't take too kindly to us. Whether or not you felt like it should have stayed unique to Vault 12 is up to personal taste. Now let's move on to something that's a little bit more of a can of worm. In Fallout 4, you can stumble upon a ghoul child that has been locked away for 200 years in a refrigerator. You can free him, take him to his parents, or sell him to a bullet, a gunner, or do both if you're feeling extra saucy. The issue comes down to the fact that Billy spent 200 years with no food or water and possibly no air. The fact that he's a ghoul suggests there's an opening of some kind to allow radiation air to leak in, but I'm not sure. Regardless, the problem with this is that ghouls need to drink water. Fallout 1 has a whole quest that around to the idea that ghouls need to drink water. Otherwise, they'll die out of dehydration. It's even a possible ending. The ghouls of Necropolis learn firsthand the final meaning of dehydration as their city succumbs to the desert sands and the water runs out. Without their water purifying control chip, they do not survive. If Billy is able to survive without needing water, then a very integral part to the first game is destroyed. But Billy isn't the only one who does this. Meet Coffin Willie, a ghoul who went to New Reno and got buried in Golgotha. In both cases, Willie and Billy are enclosed in tight spaces for an unreasonably long time that would kill any normal human. In Billy's case, the enclosure was over 200 years. For Willie's case, well, it's undisclosed, but he states for months. Some of the defenses for Willie's case is, we don't know how long he's been in there. It could have been very recent, which would be fine except for the fact that he states specifically for months. You could make the argument that he probably doesn't have the greatest track of time being buried in all, but that's hand-waving. But even if true, normal humans cannot live much longer than three days without water. So even if Willie was only down there for a week, he should be dead, assuming that ghouls have the basic needs that humans do. In Fallout 4, Bullet, a gunner, states that ghouls don't need to eat. Ghouls are immune to radiation, don't age, and don't need to eat. You could. This is, of course, after Harlan in New Vegas states that ghouls do need to eat and drink. I'm not delicate. Rad roach meat for protein. Condensation off the pipes for water. And I do my business over in the far corner. I wouldn't say it's been comfy. So this breaks an established canon. However, Fallout 4 also has a contradiction with this. In Memory Den, a terminal entry written by Irma states that Amari put safety feature in Kent's memory pod so that he wouldn't starve himself to death. This I find interesting. Conflicting information in Fallout 4's own world. Sometimes you just gotta escape a little to make it through the day. I've also seen the argument that it's just a joke for Willie. It's much more seriously presented with Billy. And yes, Billy's mission is presented a bit more seriously than Willie, but according to Pete Hines, it's more or less a joke. Though I would say that Peter Hennel's criticism with all the charisma of my Fallout 1 builds, still a joke is a joke, even crappy jokes with bad setups. To forget Willy for being a joke but criticize Billy, a joke, is a severe double standard. While undisclosed amount of month is clearly shorter than 200 years, Willy and Billy have the same issue. It's ridiculous in both cases for Billy and Willy. And Kid in the Fridge is poor writing, but it doesn't really come out of nowhere. There's a precedence for it, it's just an extremely exaggerated version of said precedence. 
The final main complaint really comes down to the criticism of schools becoming zombies. Oh, I'm gonna eat you up and be singing that happy tummy song. I got that happy tummy. This is kind of a weird one for me, because even since the first game, they've always been something of a tribute to zombies. I mean, guys, the name of their first city in Fallout 1 is Necropolis, literally City of the Dead. In the real world, necropolises refer to large cemeteries. It's pretty on the nose of what they were trying to allude to. But let's examine things a little bit more. Let's look at some of Fallout 1's dialogue files. More specifically, generic ghoul messages, or gingul.msg. It states these following entries, but I want to look specifically at 202. The body of the humanoid looks highly irradiated, but still functioning. While it was once human, it seems to have reverted to a more animalistic lifestyle. That last part, it seems to have reverted to a more animalistic lifestyle, is the main thing. The ghoul has become, well, feral, like a classic zombie. You want to get some more on-the-nose jokes, though? Fallout 2 has the ghoul crazies, and they can say this line. Mmm, brains. It looks like a corpse and is talking about eating brains. Sure, ghoul crazies are capable of using guns and can speak, indicating they're not the same type of mindless ghoul from the first game, but come on. They're meant to be illusion of zombies. Even more confirmed with Fallout 1, you can run into zombie guards. Obviously, they're ghouls, but zombies right there. They knew what they were referencing. What I felt had a more valid complaint in the newer games, 3 and of, especially so in 4, was that the idea of these frail, rotting creatures, malnourished, sprinting towards their prey to attack, when prior to this, they were shufflers and particularly weak. At least I thought that had more of an argument. Until I saw ghoul scavengers from Fallout 2 running as quickly as a regular human NBC. The zombie complaint seems more like it's taking shots at the newer games while ignoring mindless classical Night of the Living Dead-esque shufflers that existed in the originals. Angles capable of running existed in two. If the complaint is more geared to a dislike of running zombies in general, I suppose that's different. That's a matter of taste, but I don't feel like that's it. Now the continued practices of using them can be questionable. Yes, many feral ghouls are a gameplay mimic that exists to replace zombies. It's a pretty common trope in the video game world. But to ask if they ruin ghouls, honestly, only if you believe that they should have stayed exclusive to Vault 12. There's other complaints too. Some of them are fairly valid and raises a couple of good questions. For instance, the speed at which it can take to ghoulify someone, Moira getting ghoul pretty much instantly, or Obsidian doing something similar with Camp Searchlight. However, I haven't seen any lore that gives a definite timetable, especially prior to 3. Another complaint is Hancock's use of an experimental radiation drug, but honestly I can't speak to how unusual that would be. It's very, very different to the rest of the series and the way ghouls are made, no question about that. And I do know that, in real life, radiation can be injected to the body. In fact, it's actually a pretty common medical practice. So I guess it's not as far-fetched for the Fallout lore, but it seems a little unnecessary, to say the least. Hancock probably could have taken a trip to the Glowing Sea or something. This just feels like a really complicated explanation for how he became a ghoul. There's also Eddie Winter, a pre-war mob boss who may have used the same chemicals. This suggests that a pre-war scientist knew about ghouls, at least to some extent. Then finally, there's design. This one doesn't really affect the lore too terribly, just, just a matter of personal taste. In Fallout 1 and 2, ghouls look like they were rotting corpses. Large patches of skin missing, folds of skin creasing into each other. Set even appears to have exposed bones. There's also skin hiding one of his eyes, and chunks of flesh missing from his body. I suppose we could mention Harold, but he's not technically a ghoul, though he does consider himself one, as does the rest of society. 3 in New Vegas toned down the grotesqueness to some degree. Patches of skin still were missing, as were the nose. It seemed to mostly focus on that. There weren't many, if any, absolutely grotesque ones like Set. Four toned down the grossness even more. They're extremely wrinkly. Burn victim is a common phrase I seem to describe them and that seems fair. They still have the removed nose. And in the case of civilized ghouls, they tend to have full heads of hair. Not always, but most of them. Really, this one just depends on your personal taste. Whether you enjoy the absolute monstrosities of the original, the middle ground of 3 and New Vegas, or the really toned down ones of 4 and 76. They're all gross, but I would say the first game is the grossest. So, did Bethesda ruin ghouls? Not really. 
The vast majority of the complaints honestly just seem to stem from preferences. No lore is broken, at least no more lore than Fallout 2 broke, and behaviors aren't really altered. The only real complaint that holds water is, well, the water thing. Get in the fridge. But even then, that was something that Fallout 2 flirted with with Coffin Willie. Personally, I'm someone who says you should either condemn both or forgive both, because they do the same thing. They're just different time skills. Other than that, goals are fine. Design is debatable, but in the end, rules are pretty much the same as they always been. There's arguments about frequency of use. I can get that, especially since their generation is the only one that will exist. But as far as how they're used, the sane ones are discriminated species. Every ghoul is a presentation for the horrors of war. And yes, when needed, ghouls are mindless zombies.